Hi everybody. Today I'm going to show you how to make a pinch pot animal out of clay. So I've got some examples here. These are all little animals that I made out of the pinch pot technique. And that is where you make a circle out of your clay and you make it hollow and then you poke a hole in it, like here, so that one's a bit circular, poke a hole in it to let the air out in the kiln. Now we have a kiln at school, so if you make one of these at home during lockdown, you can bring it into school after it's dried and we can put it in the kiln and fire it and then you can take it home after you've painted it with a glaze. If you don't want to wait that long, then you can use air drying clay and if you haven't got any air drying clay, you can use plasticine. But if you want to do it in a kiln, like a proper potter, ceramicist, then you need to do a pinch pot. So, first of all, we make a ball of clay. I'm just using ordinary stoneware clay here and I'm cutting it in half like this and we're going to make a pinch pot which is going to be the main body of the animal. So I'm going to stick my thumb into it and turn it round like this and I'm making it into a sort of little bowl shape. Like this, so I'm pinching it, that's why it's called a pinch pot. Pinch, pinch, pinch. I'm making a little hollow and I'm going to do exactly the same on the other side. Turning it round, turning it round, so it's the same width all the way around and I want both of them to be very similar. So you've got two little bowls with chunky sides. Then what you do, put them together. Put them together and you smooth all the edges together to make one nice round ball. And then you roll it around but you don't press too hard because you want to keep the hollow inside like a football. Okay, so you've got your round ball. You smooth it all down, make it all nice and even, and then you've got the body, but you need a head, possibly a tail. That one's got a very long tail. And you need four legs, or maybe two legs, or maybe a spring, maybe claws, who knows? You can decide, you can make it based on a real animal, like this little cat, or you can make something up like that. Or that. Don't know what that is. Bit of something. So I'm going to start by pushing. I'm trying to keep the hollow inside hollow so that it has air in it because that air has to escape in the kiln. So you'll also notice that they've got poked in eyes because that's another way of letting the air out. The more ways you have of letting the air out, the more likely it is to survive in the kiln because there's air trapped in this clay and it shrinks when you put it in the kiln and fire it, it's a big oven, and that has to get out somehow. And if it hasn't got a hole to get out of, it just bursts through the walls and you end up with a cracked animal. So see what I'm doing there? I'm just pulling out little legs. So it's, at the moment it's a stumpy round thing. Could leave it there poke some holes in it, or could try and make it into more of a detailed animal. So I'm starting to pull all the four legs at the same time and just trying to keep them all even and pushing and pulling the clay around. And then I'm going to start pulling and pushing on one side like this. Push, push, push. And this is starting to be a neck now. And you can sort of feel where the thicker bits are and those are the parts that you can pull more clay from. So I can see there's a thick bit there so I'm going to push that up and into the head what that's going to become like this and I'm gradually just moving it around and then this bit I'm going to turn into a tail and I'm just going to push and pull it around until it becomes an animal. At the moment it's a squidge. Okay so we started doing these just before lockdown. Some of you might still have some that are waiting to be fired, but you can always make another. Hobbycraft sells clay, so you can buy stoneware or earthenware, 
They also deliver to your door if you don't want to go out. I don't know if it's even open, but they deliver because I got something the other day. So you can buy stoneware or earthenware clay and or air drying clay. If you buy clay that goes in a kiln, then you can get this lovely shiny finish to it, which is a glaze. There are lots of different coloured glazes and sometimes there are even textured glazes like this little llama thing and there are patterned glazes so and they're all shiny and solid quite solid so it's more hard wearing if you do it so that it goes in a kiln it has to go in twice first time to fire it as plain clay and the second time to fire it as a glaze the shiny coloured bit so you can see here it's got four legs it's got a tail and it's starting to get a head and I'm going to turn it into a cat I like cats I've got a cat called Misty and I do a lot of cats I think there's one two three four there's five six cats just there in that little row okay so you can see it's starting to become a little bit like a cat, a cat with a very big back and a squished head. So, you gradually, we're going to run out of time if I don't speed up. So, here's one I made earlier, about five minutes ago. And this one, I've straightened the tail a little bit. Let's give it a bit of a flick, because cats have nice tails, don't they? And they don't just have them sitting there. So, it's a bit of a pig cat, this one. And that's the nice thing about it, when you create something, it doesn't have to be exactly like the original. Now what I'm going to do with this, I'm going to get one of my tools, I've got some tools here. I've got a little clay knife, which is a bit of a blunt knife. I've got some wooden tools that you can smooth it with and scrape bits off. And I've got a pokey stick. I've got a paintbrush for dipping in the water and smoothing it down if it becomes too dry. And I've got this thing that you can take areas of clay off with. I don't use that one very often. There's all sorts of different tools that you can get, little spatulas. So at the moment I'm going to take a paintbrush, a little paintbrush, that one's even smaller. I'm going to poke some eyes in. Now normally I'd be looking at it. There you go. And then underneath I'm going to poke a hole there as well. And that I can feel it's hollow underneath it. So now I've remembered it's got its holes. It's got a bit of a sad expression. I might make it a bit more cheerful afterwards. What I'm going to do now is add some texture. See like these ones here, they've got this texture on the back. I'll show you how to do that. So what you do, you get some spare clay and you just pull off a little bit like this. Pull off a little bit, roll it round in your hands. Your hands get all muckier, but afterwards it brushes off or washes off very easily. See this here, just made a sort of little teardrop shape. Dip the end in the water, place it on the animal, push it in. And I've made a little bit sticking up and I'm going to do a bit more. It's actually quite soft, I don't think I even need the water. I'm starting at the back because that way you can work forwards and have them overlapping each other and you can get this nice texture. The white, that is in the glaze that I put on afterwards. So at the moment, I'm just making it a bit hairier and furrier than a normal cat would be. It's a silly fantasy cat, the way I like them to look. So I'm putting on these extra little bits of texture. Okay. And what we're doing is just building up and building up. Like that. So I've done one layer. Looks like he's got a little bit of a grass skirt on. And then the next layer, put that in front of it, in between two of the other pieces. And just push it down and leave a little bit sticking up. Like that. 
There we go. This is how I make my little creatures. Don't know what colour this one's going to be yet. I wait until they've come out of the kiln to see what they look like and then decide what colour to use. Okay, here we go again. A little bit there. There you go. So you can see it's building up like that. And you can build it up along the tail as well if you want. You've got to try not to press too hard on it. I'm going to put a bit underneath there. So I'm lifting up those bits to put this in. I'm going to have to use the brush and a bit of water to get in underneath there. So it would be lovely if over during lockdown you make some little animals. They don't have to have texture on. They don't have to be cats, catish things. They can look completely different. It can be a dinosaur, a sea creature, anything you want. Anything you want at all. It can be a Pokemon if you want. Why not try and make a Pokemon? I can imagine Raichu or Pikachu are very difficult with their big tails there. Pick an easy one if you do. So here we go. I'm building up. And then when it's finished, I'll just smooth it all down. And I check that the hole is there again, because if you forget the hole, it will blow up in the kiln, possibly. And we don't want that. There you go, so it's got a nice little lumpy textured area at the back. And then when it's finished, it goes all the way around the back like that. And that's a nice way of holding the glaze, so you can have it either smooth or lumpy and textured. Okay, there they are, with a hole in the bottom and possibly another hole in the head, just to let the air out, because it needs it. Okay, so little animals, and then when it's dry, it'll be quite brittle, so you've got to not touch it, and just look after it and keep hold of it until we get back into school, bring it with you carefully, and we'll put it in the kiln, and then we'll colour it. Okay, so that's your task, that's today's lesson, little animals, a lot of play. Bye.